as we put the final touches on next week's show. I'd like to share a few more stories with you that have been submitted by our listeners. Today's tales cover a full range of phenomena, so I'm sure that everyone will be able to find something that they can relate to. Keep in mind that I'm always interested in hearing about your experiences, so please don't hesitate to email me with your story. Let's start the show. The first time it happened, I was sleeping and woke up because I felt a hand on my leg and I realized that I couldn't move. And he'd come across this object on the ground, which was the shape of a flying saucer. So he jumped out of his pickup and went down there, and there was four beings laying on the ground. When I raised my head back up, I was turning my head, and out of my peripheral vision, I seen something hop to a tree. And it was tall, about seven, eight foot tall, and it was black, real hairy, like a gorilla. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Nick Ryan. Before we get started, I want to say thank you to Robin, Cassandra, Julie, Courtney, and Tiffany for your continued support on Patreon. Your contributions allow us to continue doing what we love, which is creating content for our listeners. Thank you. Our first story tonight comes from Courtney in Ireland. She calls her story, Can I See Dead People? Courtney says, Hi, Nick. I came across your podcast on Spotify maybe a month or so ago, and it is by far my favorite. I'm not one to go into the strange happenings I've experienced lightly, but listening to the array of stories other listeners have experienced, I would like to share a few of mine. I've grown up watching horror movies and being fascinated with ghost hunting shows, and alleged real-life footage of the paranormal since as long as I can remember. As I got older, I would ask my parents if they had had any experiences with the paranormal. Nothing out of the ordinary except the odd mysterious ghost sighting or playing with the Ouija board. But when I was old enough to not get too freaked out, they would tell me about my odd behavior as a child. My granddad died when I was almost three months old. My mom and I were living in the house with him and my nan at the time. One day he went upstairs to the bathroom to shave. My mom and some other relatives in the house at the time heard a loud bang upstairs. My mom looked at me cradled up in her arms, and noticed one single tear roll down my cheek. She always said she found it strange, because apart from the odd occasion, when I would cry, I wouldn't usually produce tears because of how young I was. Just the usual tearless newborn cry, except I wasn't crying. She said I was cooing, with a light smile on my face, even though a tear rolled down my cheek. My uncle went up to investigate the loud bang and found my granddad had passed away from a heart attack in the bathroom before he shaved. My mom just passed it off as a coincidence. A few years later, I was maybe four or five, and it was just after my cousin's communion. I had just come out of the church, and I was walking alongside a small wall, and I kept looking over it and laughing. My mom told me I was hysterically laughing. She thought it was my cousin messing around with me, crouching behind the wall and making me laugh. She decided to sneak up on us and jump up to scare my cousin behind the wall, but there was nobody there. She couldn't explain it, as I seemed as if I was fully interacting and playing around with another person. I was probably around the same age when my mom and I were just chilling at home. My living room was extremely large and long, so it was set up that the couch facing the TV had its back to the large space of the rest of the room behind it. I was sitting on the floor, probably coloring, while my mom sat on the couch watching TV. She said that I turned my head to look at her, and looked just above her. I looked confused, and said, Mommy, who's the man behind you? She was instantly freaked out, because nobody was there. Honestly, if that was my kid, I would have noped right out of the house. Later on in the day, my mom took my hand and was walking around the living room with me. I was recovering from a hip operation, so getting some light leg exercise in every day, even just by walking around the house, wasn't uncommon. I stopped in my tracks as we walked and said, That's him, as I pointed to a picture. It was a picture of my granddad holding me, a few weeks before he died. Skipping forward, it was 2010, so I was 12. 
My mom's aunt had died. I wasn't very close to her. I had met her a few times in my life, but it wasn't a regular occurrence. It was the night before her funeral. I was tucked up asleep in bed. The headboard of my bed is up against the bed opposite of the wall of my doorway. At this time in my life, I would sleep with the light on in the landing of the upstairs, as this was a new house and I had only moved into three years previous, and I was convinced it was haunted. It's ten years later and I still live in the house, which I still believe is haunted, but I have a plethora of stories about that for another time. Anyways, I woke up in the middle of the night and saw a figure standing in my open doorway. I can barely even recall the figure in my memory right now, but at the time, I just knew that it was my great aunt. I just had a convincing feeling about it. Listening to your podcast has opened me up to the idea of it being something like the Hat Man, but I don't ever remember feeling paralyzed or scared, like usual sleep paralysis. I just drifted off to sleep again and told my mom the next day, and she dismissed it as a dream. I hope you enjoyed my stories. This is just one aspect of my creepy stories. I have more regarding my haunted house, ghost experiences, my mom wanting to get me and my house blessed, and a UFO sighting that I am still unsure of, but would love to tell the story in case you have any feedback that would help me clear things up. Keep up the good work. I can't wait to hear the next episodes you have coming up. Thank you for reading, Courtney. Our next story comes from Italia. Natalia says, I love your show and I love hearing the stories. I accidentally found your podcast and have recently started listening on a daily basis. Whether you decide to include this in your podcast is entirely up to you. I just want to know that what I am experiencing, other people have felt this too, and that I'm not alone. Let me start by saying that the earliest nightmares I can remember was when I was seven or eight years old. I don't remember what they consisted of, but I would wake up terrified, covered in sweat. This was a consistent occurrence, so much so that I would sleep with my mom in her bed for months at a time, until I deemed it safe to go back to my room, in which I would spend one night, have another nightmare, and repeat the whole cycle again. But even sleeping with my mom, I would still have the same nightmare. Eventually, as I grew older, the nightmares stopped completely, until I reached adulthood. In adulthood, my nightmares graduated to night terrors and sleep paralysis. Usually, my night terrors or episodes of sleep paralysis will last for about a week straight, meaning that I will have a nightmare, night terror, or an episode of sleep paralysis every single night for a week straight, maybe 10 days at the most, and then they disappear for months at a time, or in some cases, a year or two. The most recurring night terror that I have had is still so vivid in my mind. It's very present in my imagination, because it's as if it was really happening to me, and I had that nightmare or night terror for over two years, again with breaks in between, but it was always the same for the most part, but we'll get back to that later. At the time, I lived in a two-bedroom apartment with my husband and daughter. The dream starts with me sitting in my living room, and it's daylight, and all of a sudden everything goes dark, and I'm running in fear for my life. This is going to sound weird, but at the start of the dream, it's as if I know what's happening, and I think to myself, oh no, not again. I know the drill, and I know what's going to happen. I dart to my daughter's room to make sure that she's okay, which she always is, and then I start running to my room. I am running through a long hallway, which my apartment did not have. I am running, and I look back, and there's something chasing me. I can't see what it is, but all I know is that I'm running for my life. I know that I need to run. I know that I need to wake myself up. I know that I am in a dream and I know that I will find my body asleep in my bed, and that I need to wake myself up to end this nightmare. I finally reach my room, and I can see myself and my husband sleeping. I look back once again behind me, and I still can't see what it is. All I know is that I need to wake myself up, because otherwise, it will get me. I jump on the bed on top of myself, and I'm trying to wake myself up. I cannot for the life of me wake me up, but I keep shaking myself, screaming at myself, at the top of my lungs to wake up. The dream me is shaking me awake, and actual me knows that I need to wake up, and I am paralyzed. I can only move my hand, and I search for my husband's hand because he knows the drill. Once actual me can reach his hand, I am able to vocalize only whimpers, because dream me is still screaming in my face, 
and terrifying me because I know that whatever it is, it's getting closer. When my husband actually realizes what's happening, he wakes me up, and it's as if I can finally breathe again, like I was holding in my breath and didn't realize it. For the most part, I said the dream is always the same. The components are always the same with the exception that my apartment will be in the same state in my dream as it was how I left it the night before. The creepy part is that I have had this nightmare and I saw my daughter asleep in her bed, safe sleeping in a certain position in my dream, and when I wake up and go check on her, she's in that same position, and I catch a glimpse of it before she moves positions, as if whatever was chasing me wanted me to see their influence in my life outside my dream. Please bear with me, I know this is long. The reason I'm writing is because we, in the last year, moved apartments, and my dreams have been gone for about a year, until recently. Recently, I feel as if I'm being watched while I sleep. My husband and I sleep with our door open, and we always have, and so does our daughter. She used to have night terrors, and we would always leave the hall light on, and it was just easier to hear her if she was having a night terror, and we became used to it. For the last three weeks, I will go to sleep, and I am closest to the door, and my bed faces my door, and I can feel someone peeking from the other side of the wall into my room. I feel like I'm being watched, and then as soon as I wake up, I look at the hall into the area, and nothing is there, and something next to my bed is telling me that it's okay to go to sleep. I go back to sleep only to be woken up again, to repeat the cycle again. This usually happens about three to four times a night, and it doesn't stop there. I was at work telling my coworker what was going on, because I was really sleep deprived, and we were talking about it when all of a sudden we heard voices talking near us, and we turned to look, and no one was there. No one but us. The other night, my husband and I were on our computers. Our computers are next to each other, and he's to my right. My right arm starts going really, really cold. He touches my left arm, and it's warm, and I told him I felt scared. Probably not a good idea, because he starts yelling really, really loudly. He says, Whatever you are, you are not welcome in our home. Get out and leave us alone. When he did that, my right arm feels like there's blood circulating through it again. I don't know what's going on, but I know that I want this to stop. I am very sleep deprived and I need sleep. I don't know what to do and it feels lonely. Thank you for listening. Atalia, I just wanted to say I can assure you that you're not alone. Many of our listeners do suffer from sleep paralysis and night terrors. As a child, I was even prone to getting night terrors on a fairly regular basis. While I can't recommend a quick fix for what you're experiencing, sometimes cleansing your home of negative energy can help in these situations. Just be sure to not take this process lightly and find someone local to you that can assist you in the proper way to do it. In the meantime, just try to remember that you're not alone, and if any of our listeners have thoughts on Atalia's situation, you can email me and I'll forward your message on to her. Our next story comes from Gretel. Gretel says, Hey Nick, my family has had many stories of the paranormal. My mom has death dreams. I have stories ranging from demonic presences, to creepy dolls, to demonic elf creatures. My grandmother is a very religious woman, and doesn't like to believe in the paranormal, but knows that demons and spirits are very much real. My mom has the strongest connection with the paranormal out of all of my family members. My mom has these death dreams where someone in our family dies, and then they die in real life. The most impactful dream that she has had was a dream about an uncle of hers. This happened in Mexico when she was young. My mom had a dream where her and her uncle were standing. She didn't go into details. Her uncle started talking to her and telling her that he died. He told her that he wanted her to go with him. She said no, and he started to pull her, and she was able to get away from his grip, so she started running. He chased her and grabbed her by the ankles. He started to pull her, and my mom woke up. That morning, she told my grandmother what she had dreamt. My grandmother didn't believe her. A few minutes later, my grandmother got the call that he had died. A few years back, my mom told me that she had the same dream again. He wanted to pull her to hell. She told me she woke up crying, and my dad had to calm her down. What's weird is that we live in the U.S. now. My mom has predicted the death of the unborn child of my aunt by a dream also. When she told me these stories, I didn't believe her, 
but knowing that I also have a strong presence with spirits, I started to believe her. One of the scariest experiences that has happened in my family was around last year. This story is my aunt's story. She told us that one night she woke up in the morning around 3 or 4 a.m. They have security cameras because they have been robbed before. So my aunt decided to check the cameras. She told us that she saw this weird hybrid creature. It had a pointed messed up face with fangs. It was walking on all fours, but it had hands and feet. It was skinny and long, and she said it looked like some sort of elf demon. The creature got close to the camera and looked straight at her. She turned it off immediately, and that morning she checked the footage. The footage of those exact moments had disappeared, and it was fuzzy. After that, my aunt started going to church, knowing that the creature had bad intentions. I have plenty more stories, and I would love to tell you about them. Thanks for reading my long stories. Keep on doing a great job with the podcast. Next story comes from Angie in Texas. Angie calls her story, Sleep Paralysis. I had never even heard of sleep paralysis until I met my ex-husband. When we moved in together, one of the first times we went to sleep, I heard my husband sort of whimper. When I turned toward him, he was gripping onto my pillow, and he woke up as I turned around. I asked him if he was okay, and he said that he had sleep paralysis of my mom attacking him, and he was holding on to his bicycle. A couple of days after, I went to my mother's house and took a nap on the couch. I woke up, unable to move my body. I was lying on my stomach with my face looking toward the hallway. I tried so hard to move my body when I started to hear someone walking toward me. I tried even harder because I started to see a figure coming toward me. It was moving very robotic, and then I realized it was a clown. I'm not afraid of clowns, but this scared the ever-living crap out of me. It got closer and closer till it got to my face, when I screamed and woke up. That was the only time I've had sleep paralysis. Our next story comes from Lindsay. Lindsay says, Hi, I've been listening to your podcast on Spotify for a while now, and I absolutely love your podcast. Keep doing what you're doing. It really helps everyone to be able to resonate and feel connected to others who have had similar experiences. My story is long, so I'm sorry ahead of time. Mine is probably a little different than the things that have been told on your show before. First, I'll start by saying that I'm very connected to the spiritual world. I currently own four haunted dolls. They are spirits who have attached themselves to a vessel to help guide us in our lives. They stayed behind to help. Mine are all positive and extremely sweet, and they have helped me so much in my daily life. When I got my first, her name is Demetrius. She told me I needed to cleanse my house. I was shocked. My apartment is only two years old. I do live across the street from a hospital, so I asked her what was this built on. She told me they tore down a mental institution and built this complex on it. She said there were lots of negative energies still on the grounds, so I cleansed my house and everything changed for a couple of weeks. On Saturday, I had surgery on my ear due to an earplug being lodged into it. I came home and was exhausted and in pain. I got into bed and I started to doze off, but then my cat got into my lap and snuggled up, so I decided to turn off the light and close my eyes. I instantly felt hands on my waist. I opened my eyes and was in instant terror. I started to feel it pull me towards my headboard. My cat sat up and looked terrified. I instantly started to struggle and it started to pull me upwards. I looked down and I was a couple inches off my bed, and I could see my cat under me. I got the courage to move my hands and say the Lord's Prayer and sign the cross. I was instantly dropped. I shut my eyes so tightly and I heard a voice. I knew it was Demetrius. She said, You're safe. I've got you. Nothing has happened since, and we cleanse the house again. I know how crazy this sounds, but I would never, and I mean never, fake anything like this. I've never had a physical meeting with a spirit like this before. Let me know if you want to hear any more of my experiences, and thank you for taking the time to hear mine. May God bless you. Lindsay. Our next story comes from Jennifer. Jennifer calls her story, Witness to a UFO. Jennifer says, I live in Toronto, Ontario, and must have been no more than 10 years old at the time. So this was roughly 20 years ago, but I still swear to this day that what I saw was real. 
My dad and I had gone skating at the rink that my school had set up in the winter, and he had to make a stop at the store before we headed home. He stopped and knelt down to tie his shoe, and I looked up to see if I could spot any stars. We were on a main street, so there were street lights on both sides, and it was well lit. It was then that a bowl-shaped object went over us, following the road as if it was a landing strip. On the underside that I could see were large oval lights that changed colors. I just watched as it went past without a sound, so I knew there was no way it could have been a plane or a helicopter. As far as I can tell, I was the only one who had seen it, and any time that I said anything, no one believed me, so I just thought it was something I came up with out of boredom. But as I grew up, I was convinced that I had actually witnessed a UFO. Our next story comes from Chris in British Columbia. Chris says, I'm 26 years old and I live in British Columbia, Canada. I and my friend saw a 7 to 8 foot tall white being in his backyard forest in the rural part of my city at night. It was in the shape of an upside down V, or U. It was swaying back and forth silently, and I felt like I was going to die. It was pure white, and when I say pure white, I mean paper, or bone white. Not see-through, just pure white, long limbs, from what we could see in the dark. It was so white that it looked like it was almost giving off light, but it wasn't, because it was not shining or illuminating the trees or ground around it, and I'm pretty sure you could see shadow on it, from it moving back and forth in the same place between the trees. It looked bulky and strong at the top and shoulder areas, and where a head would be, but there was no head that we could see. It looked solid, and looked three-dimensional. I can only describe it as seven to eight feet tall, shiny separated curtains in the shape of an upside-down V or U, with some sort of bulkiness or shape to the top half. The whole thing was swaying, touching the forest floor right and left, back and forth, in a specific motion with no sound at all. Absolutely no wind, dead silent. The two long legs, or arms, almost looked if how the front view of an ape crawling on all fours would look like, as if they were hunched in front. I tried my best to squint my eyes and adjust them to the supernatural being, dark being better to see what it was doing, or if I could make out what it looked like better, but it did not help at all. It just still appeared as I described. I started to feel impending doom, the sinking feeling in your chest. It started to set in as I was watching it silently swaying back and forth, and I felt like I was going to die or something really bad was going to happen. We left the forest immediately and didn't venture further into the forest or attempt to go up to it. I felt like I was in extreme danger, and I know the feeling pretty well from past experiences to know when I am in danger. A variation of the one we saw, or the same one we saw, were caught on camera in Fresno, California, and labeled the Fresno Nightcrawlers. The different First Nations here in British Columbia call them by various different names. They use a double-headed serpent to represent them, and they are some kind of specific supernatural beings. I wrote out me and my friend's whole encounter here, including research based off of what I was told personally by someone who is First Nations, that lives an hour away from me and the location where we saw the being. Chris included some of the various names that the First Nations people use to refer to these creatures. I'll add them to the show description, as well as to our forum so that everyone can access them. Thank you again to Courtney, Italia, Gretel, Angie, Lindsay, Jennifer, and Chris for writing in and sharing your stories with all of us. If you have a story or question for the show, you can email me at paranormalmysteriespodcast at gmail.com, or you can visit paranormal-mysteries.com. You can also get involved by joining our forum and by following us on social media. If you'd like to support the show, you're supporting it right now just by listening, and we appreciate that. You can also help by subscribing to the show and sharing it with your friends. If you're looking for further ways to show your support, you can visit patreon.com forward slash paranormal mysteries and become a patron there new episodes of the show are available on all of your favorite podcast apps including spotify apple podcasts and iHeartRadio. from all of us at paranormal mysteries 
Thank you for listening, and remember, don't wait for the unknown to come to you. Get out there and find it. <laughs>